So many eyes on the governor's race on the Republican side. Let's see, you've got incumbent Governor Rick Perry, Senator Kay Bailey Hutchison, and a third candidate offering you another choice on the Republican ticket. In fact, in the San Antonio Express News on Saturday, Bruce Davidson wrote a column on her. Deborah Medina, the former Wharton County Republican chairperson, who is a Ron Paul-style Republican. If you've been listening to me on the radio, you know I loves me some Ron Paul. Deborah Medina, a registered nurse and a businesswoman, and she is on our 550 Newsmaker line right now. Deborah Medina, welcome to 550 KTSA. Good morning, Chris. All right, Deborah, you are going up against two Goliath-like political monsters, Rick Perry, Kay Bailey Hutchison. What made you decide to get into this race? I've been working uh, pretty diligently in politics for nearly 20 years, and I am sick and tired of the broken promises, one after another, after another, after another. Um, and the governor, unfortunately, is just a great campaigner. He he throws out that uh, conservative rhetoric, but, boy, we haven't seen conservative government coming out of Austin. Well, and, and I, I agree with you, and I, I was raised conservative, I was raised Republican, and I kind of felt that the Republican Party, in the direction it's gone in the last several years, left me behind, left me looking for other alternatives. Uh, in the 2008 race, I was very, very inspired by and supportive of Ron Paul for the presidency, but it looked like the Republican Party viewed him as a joke. They tried, they, they, they tried to mock him as much as they could, and the media followed suit. What, what makes you think that your candidacy can gain traction in Texas? Oh, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't, I guess, kid myself for a second. I think the party's going to do the same thing. I think they, they lock up pretty tightly with kind of an aristocracy. Um, we saw that in Washington, D.C. We see the same thing happening here in Texas. Uh, but this is a people's race. This is a race where, you know, I've been all over the state, and the grassroots in Texas is very united. We are tired of the big spending, and, and certainly the Tea Parties have evidenced the frustration with Washington, but I'm out there telling people it's the same thing in Austin, Texas. We've gone from $12 billion worth of debt when Rick Perry took office to $31 billion now, and Kay Hutchison is going to be no different. She's going to bring that Washington insider uh, spend 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 it'll fix all of our problems to Austin that's not the answer we need true limited government conservative elected officials in Austin when I was growing up Deborah my understanding of a Republican was someone who was fiscally conservative who uh, and also believed in personal responsibility and civil liberties and personal freedom and I am amazed especially just starting with fiscal responsibility it, it, there was a time when and it was the Democrats that would spend, 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 spend. But in Washington and in Texas, uh, the Republicans seem to be drunk off the spending as much as the Democrats are. You know, Chris, our Texas Constitution has a limit in it. It says we can only spend 5% of our general revenue towards the repayment of our debt. Under the governor, we have exhausted 85% of that limit. Um, we are in. A, we've got a serious spending problem in Texas, and neither Kay nor Rick are going to address that. Uh, I'm going to fight real hard to win in this David and two Goliaths race, so that we really can show the country that limited government makes for the best economy for everybody in the state, the businesses, and the people. She is Deborah Medina, candidate for Texas governor. Deborah, as I look at your website, MedinaForTexas.com. You list a lot of issues, uh, and some of them we've already talked about. Role of government, uh, state sovereignty, taxes and spending. You talk about the business climate in Texas. How do you currently regard the business climate in Texas, and how would you help to change it? Well, we tell ourselves we don't have a state income tax, but I think many of us that are in business would call that margins tax and income tax. That's got to be overhauled. But the first thing we have to do in Texas is eliminate the property tax. We need to quit messing around with, with appraisal caps and get rid of the property tax. It's an onerous, unfair tax. But the bottom line is uh, you're not free unless you, ha you own private property and you are entitled to gun ownership. We have got to quit compromising on private property ownership 
in gun ownership. We need to eliminate the property tax, go to a broader base sales tax. That's going to do a lot for the business climate in Texas. It's going to get that same onerous business condition off of businesses and open the state's business economy up to capital-intense businesses that are currently not coming here. Um, limited government, Chris, limited government. And we don't have, we've got a lot of people that talk about it, but boy, they're not willing to do it when they get in office. They are not. And, and Deborah, on your website as well, I see uh, one of the uh, Texas common values that you mentioned, illegal immigration. How, as governor, would you address illegal immigration? We've got a lot of work to do in that area. The property, getting rid of the property tax and going to a consumption tax helps all of us with the concern we have about the cost of illegal immigrants in our school system. Um, we've still got some health care issues that people are concerned about. And, of course, we've got this kind of open border. We're working with a number of coalitions around the state to identify the best measures to strengthen that, but it seems that everybody believes if we would stop some of the social incentives, the free health care and the free education uh, for those folks that are coming in illegally, we would, we would severely uh, reduce that number. We're working with people and looking for some strong solutions there, and, and you're not going to hear from me a little silver bullet, because there isn't one, uh, and we're working on that. We want to see... Uh, everybody that's here being subject to the same set of laws and if you're breaking our laws then you need to pay uh, the punishment for breaking those laws we've got to if if we're going to survive as a republic follow the laws that we have established illegal immigration is illegal and it needs to stop Republican candidate for governor Deborah Medina on 550 KTSA Deborah on this show this morning it's already come up quite a bit and I've talked about it over the years quite a bit on this radio station uh, governor Rick Perry supports the tolling of existing Texas highways he supports uh, a consortium such as Sintra Zachary Sintra from Spain Zachary from Texas including San Antonio uh, to create toll roads on existing Texas highways. Uh, what would your position be on that? Absolutely. No toll roads. You know, he keeps telling us that he's gotten the message, but he sure stuck snuck those CDAs into the call in the special session. So even as recently as early June, he's out there trying to, you know, sell it to us in incremental bites. That's not the way to provide for transportation. TxDOT is certainly um, a state agency out of control. We've got work to do there to overhaul that agency, look at its efficiency, uh, work with regional authorities to find transportation solutions that work. There is no one-size-fits-all, but, but tolling is not the answer, and certainly not tolling existing roads um, and taking private property from people. Well, that is a huge issue here in San Antonio, Deborah, and certainly Bear County. Uh, there have been uh, fight after fight after fight to try to stop the tolling of existing highways uh, here in Bear County. I, I think uh, you would certainly get a lot of mileage, uh, certainly on the toll road issue and on the stand that you're taking. Finally, if people want to learn more about you and get involved in your campaign, what's the best way to do that? MedinaForTexas.com, we look forward to working with individual citizens. This really is a grassroots effort. We're never going to have the money that the other two do to buy a lot of media time, but elbow grease and hard work uh, has saved the day many times for freedom, and we're looking forward to involving Texans from all over the state. So I hope your listeners will visit us at www.MedinaForTexas.com. Deborah Medina, I got to tell you, everything that you're saying seems to make good common sense, uh, and I think uh, America and Texas could use more uh, candidates for office like you. I appreciate your taking the time, and I look forward to talking with you again in the future. Best of luck on the campaign. Thank you, Chris. Have a good week. You too, Deborah. Deborah Medina, website medinafortexas.com. You've got a choice. You don't have to just select the people who have the millions and millions and millions of dollars in their war chest.